All right, this is SSL Family Dad, and today we're gonna to talk all about till versus no-till. All right, so here's the deal. A lot of times when I come out here with this tiller, or my little tiller, um, or any other tillage machinery, a plow or anything like that, uh, I always get comments and, and, and people, they're always talking about tilling versus no-tilling. Why don't you do no-till? You're not practicing regenerative farming. You're destroying the soil. You're, uh, you're causing global warming. You're releasing carbon into the atmosphere. There's all kinds of comments out there. There's all kinds of, of things that, that people say. And so today I wanted to talk about it. I want to talk about what the difference is between tilling or tillage uh, or the no-till method that is so very popular out there. In fact, about 50% or more of farmers, as far as I know, I think in 2016, use the no-till method, uh, while the others use some type of a um, traditional tillage. So let's start with farmers and what they do to prepare a field all right so we're going to talk i'm going to talk a lot about farm fields and bigger operations here but this this very well goes for gardens as well small gardens as well so what traditionally what a farmer does is they will uh, go out and they will have a field and let's say that that field was planted last year with corn uh, what they'll do is they'll go through with a plow in the early spring and they will flip over a good maybe six inches of soil flip it over and bury in all the corn stubble, the, the bottoms of the corn stalks, all the root material that's growing in that six inch layer. Um, and then you're gonna take that plow and you're gonna, you're gonna flip that soil over. Then after that, they'll come back with uh, a disc or uh, some other machinery cultivator, something like that, usually a disc, a really big uh, disc with a bunch of little wheel blades on it. And they'll drive that over the field maybe two times. And that breaks up all the big plow clumps and kind of separates everything out and, and blends everything down nice and flat and breaks it all up into some kind of finer soil that then is ready for a planter. The planter will come through and it uses a little knife in front of it and it, it cuts a trench in the soil and it puts the seeds in it in a nice little pattern and, and things grow and, and all things are good. So that is traditional tillage. Um, now that's not talking about rototillers. Most farmers don't use rototillers. Rototiller would be way too cumbersome to take through a field. Uh, way too much tractor power on a large scale to do that. So generally they use other tillage type equipment, which is plows and discs. Okay, so now on the flip side, what does a no-till operation do? Well, they don't use a plow and they don't use a disc. They generally use uh, one piece of machinery called a seed drill. And a seed drill, what that does is it has a few knives on it and they will cut right through last year's crop of corn or soybeans or cotton or whatever it is that you're planting on a cash crop scale anyway. So they'll cut right through whatever stubble and, and things are left on the field from last year, and they'll plant right in that. And then you'll see, you'll go out and look at a field and it'll have a bunch of corn stalks sticking up and root material and all that stuff. And then you'll see the new uh, soybean crop or corn crop or whatever they plant again, hopefully they're rotating. And uh, then they will, those things will grow up and then the corn stalks will break down over the year, or possibly two to three years is about how long they take to break to fully break down. And, and that's it, that's all they'll do. So why the big push for no-till? What are the supposed benefits? Why are people switch? What's all the talk about no-till? What's the big deal? Supposedly, no-till is supposed to help keep the, this carbon material sequestered in the ground longer, so it's not breaking down as quickly, and that's supposed to be a carbon sink for the whole you know, global warming and, and climate change deal. Um, the other supposed benefit is that it prevents all kinds of runoff and other things. You get all this erosion, you know, and, and, and in certain cases that is true. That is a benefit that is definitely in some cases true. And then the other benefit is talked about that it helps to maintain better soil quality. So you're not disturbing this uh, layers of soil that are naturally built and all these things. And uh, you have all these organisms that, you know, build uh, their layers through the soil all these microorganisms and fungi and all these other things that grow in there and they they create this healthy soil right living soil which is what we want and so the no-till method doesn't disturb that as much it just kind of lets things break down in layers but here's the kicker here's the thing that's going to really maybe blow your mind if you're a no-till guy or girl out there uh, this is the real reason all right that they don't tell you it, th this no-till operation it really doesn't have any business in an organic or natural farming practice okay and here's the reason why no-till requires 
almost two to three times the amount of harmful chemicals, mainly herbicides, sprayed on a field in order to maintain the, uh, the, the pest and weed levels that are in those fields. It also still uses fertilizers. Maybe it uses less fertilizer. That's uh, really, there's not been any good studies that have had some good comparisons of how much fertilizer is used in different practices. This is a GMO operation. This no-till farming practice is completely designed around GMO crops. You've got a GMO crop. Now, there's nothing wrong with genetically modified crops, crops that were, you know, maybe designed or, or bred over years to, to grow better and all that kind of stuff. But these crops are specifically designed for Roundup Ready herbicides, pesticides, and fertilizers. They are, they are, they use an enormous amount of chemicals and, and harmful chemicals. I want to make that distinction because people, in other videos, I talked about chemicals and compost, and they're like, well, water is a chemical. And Guys, I'm not talking about water. I'm talking about harmful chemicals. I'm talking about the herbicides that are most commonly used. I can't think of the name off the top of my head. You know, less than a teaspoon of it in contact with the human body can kill you. That's the kind of stuff we're talking about, that we're spraying over our food. Trace amounts are found in food all over the country, all over the world. These are the chemicals, the harmful chemicals that are being doused on our food. All right, the food that goes into our livestock, the food that goes into pastures, the food that goes into things that we eat directly. That's the kicker. No-till farming has no way to deal with weeds. It has no way to deal with last year's perennial crops. It has no way to get rid of grasses. It has no way to get rid of hay fields. It has no way to get rid of things that regrow on their own every year. When we talk about no-till farming, it sounds great. And everyone's like, oh, you're not using no-till farming. You're using old school farming and we learned all these things. Guys, everybody around here uses no-till farming. It uses, they have to spend less time in their fields. They have to have less equipment. They just need one thing. They just need a seed, a seed drill, that's it. They don't need plows, they don't need discs. They don't need to spend all that fuel driving and doing all that stuff. It's easier for the farmer. It saves the farmer some money possibly because they do have to spend a lot more money on chemicals, but it generally saves them time and, and fuel and things like that in their tractors. They can use smaller tractors for a seed drill also. Uh, and there are some other advantages. But don't be misled that you know no-till farming is some kind of better farming. It's some kind of uh, uh, a perfect alternative to plowing a field. Now there are lots of cases, if you're farming on the side of a hill or different things like that, you, you probably want to leave that stubble in the ground and you might want to use a seed drill or something because you are going to get a lot of runoff. Out here, there is no slope to this land out here and generally across the Midwest and in all the, the corn belt and, and, and uh, where they're growing the majority of the crops in the, in the United States, there's, there's no slope to the land. It's also almost completely flat or you've got slow rolling hills and things like that. You don't need to worry too much about erosion. You only need to worry about that generally for the first few weeks after you plow uh, when your crops haven't root. Once the crops take root, you're not going to have to worry about erosion anyway. The common misconception is that when you don't disrupt the soil, that you have a better, ultimately and, and automatically you have better soil because you didn't disrupt it. And all of the you know, bugs and, and uh, decomposers, the worms and, and roly polies and all the other things out there, nematodes and whatever else you have in the soil that uh, you know, breaking everything down, all the, the fungi growing in there and uh, all that stuff creates this network in the soil. It, it keeps the soil loose and this great soil, right? That's what we wanna build. But you're still driving tractors over the field, over the field. You're still running your seed drill through the field. You're still running your, your, your fertilizer through the field. You're still running your herbicides through the field. You're still running your pesticides through the field. You're driving over and over and over that soil. You're compacting it anyway. Most of the soil in all these farm fields is completely sterile. There is almost zero organic matter in their field. You can go out to a farm field around here. If you've got one, you live in the Midwest, go out to a farm field, stop by and just dig your hand into the soil if you can. It's probably like going like this. That's what you're gonna feel. Because there's no nutrients in that soil. It's all derived, the, the plants grow almost completely from chemicals. Harmful chemicals, guys, fertilizers. They're, they're spraying fertilizers all over these crops. It's the only way they grow. They're not even, they don't even care about the soil. With traditional farming and traditional gardening like people have been doing for thousands of years, when you plow the soil, you're flipping generally all of the organic matter, all this stuff, all the grasses, all the weeds that have popped up early in the spring, you're flipping all that stuff over, you're breaking that soil up. You do have to drive the tractor over the field and you are gonna get some compaction. Either way, you get compaction of the soil. But all that organic matter is now underneath the soil, right in the root zone. All the grasses, all of the perennials, especially if you're turning a hay field into a, a corn field or, a, or something like that, where you've got all these perennials coming up. 
you flip all that stuff over into the soil. You've got all this organic matter in there. That's at the beginning of the year, guys, spring. It doesn't take that long for all those bugs to return, for all those microbes to start to grow again, for all the fungi to return. As the roots are growing, they create this relationship in the soil. The root creates air in the soil. What's growing in there keeps the soil fluffy. You have to use far less chemicals, fertilizers and herbicides and pesticides on the field because you're, you're building healthy soil every year by saving some of that organic matter. Corn stubble sitting above the ground takes several years to break down fully. It takes several years. It's just sitting there. It's dry. It's above the ground. It's in the sunshine. It has no, no decomposers that are going to be working on it until it's mashed into the soil into a cool place that, it might, that these decomposers can get to. Get to. When you flip that, that corn stalk into the ground, it immediately starts to decompose. All of the worms and other bugs and, and all those things start to attack that and eat it and break it down into great fertilizer. So you need to use less fertilizer as well because you've got that readily available. Every year, that stuff will break down in your soil and you can, you can really maintain better soil. That's why people have been doing it for years this way. And here is the number one reason why I do not use any type of no-till method here. There, ha there is no other way that I know of other than a machine I'll talk about at the end here. There is no other way that's readily available to me anyway that I have to go from hay fields, which I have over here. If I wanna switch this hay field into a corn field or a sunflower field or grow some other crop here, potatoes, tomatoes, whatever it is I wanna grow there, I gotta get rid of all this hay. This stuff comes up every year. There's alfalfa in there, there's all kinds of stuff. This grows every year. How do you get rid of this? How do you get rid of all this without blasting it with a harmful chemical that will completely annihilate everything on this field and literally sterilize it. It also kills the microbes. It also kills all the little microorganisms and all the things that we want in the soil. When you go and no-till, if you were gonna no-till this field, you'd have to come out here and just obliterate all these, all the, the growth that's out here first. Sterilize this field, then grow your crop in it. And you'd have to use a GMO Roundup Ready type crop because otherwise, all that herbicide that you sprayed on the field is going to kill the crop as soon as it comes up. So it has to be genetically modified to handle the specific herbicide that you're putting on there. So that herbicide kills everything except for your soybean plant. You have no way to transition from a perennial to a non-perennial type crop like corn or soybeans or sunflowers or tomatoes or peppers or potatoes or whatever you want to grow. Out here, I've got this huge spot we're tilling up. I'm going to plant a cover crop out here this year, millet, right? That's what we're doing out here. You'll see that in the next video. This is covered in, this will used to be a hay field. There's all kinds of grasses in here. There's weed seeds from, I put a whole bunch of compost out here from our manure compost. There's weeds in here, there's seeds in here. There's all kinds of things here. How do I get rid of this and grow in it without tilling it under? When you till it through with a rototiller or with a plow and disc or whatever, you completely get rid of that, but you keep all that organic matter in the soil. No chemicals, no harmful things being sprayed all over here that I wouldn't even come near with a 10 foot pole because it's dangerous for everybody. You know, I'm spraying all this stuff out here. It's going to make the animals sick and make the deer sick that I'm going to be hunting later this year. It's going to run off into the streams and all the creeks and all that stuff around here and completely pollute everything around here because it's completely filled with all of these hazardous chemicals that are being sprayed in the field. That's why we don't use any chemicals here. I don't use organic chemicals. I don't use any kind of fertilizers. I don't pesticides, anything like that. I don't use any kind of harmful uh, uh, um, chemicals in, in these, these gardens or, or fields. But lastly, there are a few alternatives that are neither no-till or regular tilling to, uh, tillage. There's, there's some alternatives out there and there's some newer things when we start, in the, you know, in the last 10, 15 years, organic farming has blown up and natural farming and stuff like that. So people are truly seeking out how to build good soil and also get rid of these types of cover crops and other things without using dangerous chemicals. And there are some, uh, there are some newer equipment out there that actually shreds this stuff up and it creates a mulch layer. And then you have a kind of seed drill that comes right behind it and plants through the uh, shredded uh, cover crop. You grow like a millet or uh, a vetch or a, a, you know, field peas or something like that in your field. And then you can mow that stuff down. You plant it super early in the spring or in the fall, let it come up and then you mow that stuff down. And then you plant right in that. And then that keeps the weeds down. You don't have to use a bunch of herbicides and other stuff like that. And that stuff breaks down into the soil and then you can plant in it. So that's a, that's a kind of an alternative. There are also lots of ways to use straw and wood chips and cover crops, like I said, and um, all kinds of other things. But on a, a large scale, if you're gonna do a thousand acres, 
you have to um, you have to understand there's added cost to that there's added other things and it makes things a little bit more difficult but those are great alternatives and things thinking outside the box like that that's what we need to focus on not just going with what everybody on YouTube and what everybody on the internet says and on the news about no-till being the greatest thing in the world because it really is hazardous and dangerous for the environment and it is a complete offshoot of all of the Roundup Ready crops that are out there. This is another thing that came about with all the GMO crops and Roundup Ready and chemical, 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 throw spray fields with everything all year long. And it's just another way to do that and, and make more money per acre on cash crops. It's all this is. So hopefully <laughs> the end of rant, uh, end of rant about tilling. Um, we just got this rototiller this year and it's been probably the most useful tool that I've ever, um, ever owned. It has saved me so much time and built such good soil. Um, I can dig into this soil that I just tilled here and it's loaded with broken down material. It's loaded with the weeds that I uh, tilled in about a month ago out here uh, and the grasses and all that stuff, that stuff all broke down in the soil. It's so light and fluffy and black. And when we plant our cover crop out here, I have a feeling it's gonna do very well. Let me know what you guys think. I know there'll probably be lots of comments about this, but I'd love to hear what you guys think. I mean, am I crazy here? Am I totally off base? So I have some truth in there, what I'm saying. Uh, I'd love to hear what you guys think. I know there's a lot of people out there that have, uh, are just really against the whole tilling thing, but I think you gotta think of all the other factors. And so let me know, toss it in the comments, tear it up, rant all you want. I wanna hear it, I wanna read it, share it with others, whatever you got to say, I'd love to hear from you. So. Thumbs up on the video, guys. Don't forget to touch that thumbs up button right below the video. And of course, subscribe. If this is your first time here, the SSL Family Dad channels, all about gardening and DIY stuff and building uh, this farm and sometimes a rant about tilling. And uh, you never know what to expect here. So love to have you tag along. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.